Hello, everyone, and inside today's Locked On Canadians, the Habs battle, the officials, and the Bruins in another overtime clash. You are Locked On Canadians, your daily podcast on the Montreal Canadiens, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 1031 of Locked on Canadians. We are your daily Montreal Canadiens podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, where you get your team every single day of the week. And as always, thank you for making us your first listen wherever you get your daily podcast, whether that be Google, Apple, Spotify, or if you are watching on YouTube.com. I am one of your hosts. I am Scott Matlin. I'm joined, as always, by the active stick, Laura Saba. And Laura, it used to be... When the Habs and Bruins played, it was a week-long lead-up, and it was a big deal, and it was can't-miss television. And now I didn't even know this game was happening until today, even though I went over the schedule with it earlier this week. Uh, But we got what kind of felt a little more like a classic Habs-Bruins game for all the right and wrong reasons, I think. Uh, Habs lose 2-1 in overtime in a game where they probably should have lost by more, but didn't. But we'll break it all down. How are you feeling? Um, In my sort of preview yesterday, all I asked for was that this not be a circus that we talk about for four weeks for the wrong reasons. I do feel like we are going to talk a little bit about it for the wrong reasons. Um, But, uh, you know, as, as far as Canadians and Bruins games go, uh, I, th- I thought it was really funny that you said you'd forgotten this whole thing even ha- was happening until, you know, the game actually started. Uh, for me, I was walking to the Metro and I was like, why are there so many Bruins jerseys around? Oh, yeah. Um, and I think the game wasn't the game wasn't terrible. I think the Canadians played as well as they could have. But there were things that went wrong in it that absolutely had no reason to happen and i think scott you're about to get into that (laughs) i I see you gearing up (laughs) i so here's the thing is i am not going to blame the officiating for the reason why the canadians lost this game because the habs did have power play opportunities to turn those chances into goals the issue was the level of egregiousness of a penalty it took to get a canadian's power play in this game was beyond insane it was and even when it was so blatantly obvious, it still wasn't a guarantee. Yol Armia on a four-minute penalty kill had Pasternak literally draped all over him, holding on to him, and there is nothing. Not long after that, I watched Caden Gooley's feet get swept out from underneath him by Charlie Coyle, and there was nothing called on it. And this is, here's the thing is, the Bruins are going to get away with it because they know they can get away with it. And if you know you can get away with it, Fine. If you're not cheating, you're not trying, as the adage goes. I get it. I don't have to like it, but I understand it. Brad Marchand felt Caden Gooley's glove slightly by his face in the first period and did a full spinning pirouette like a sniper put a 50 cal through his back shoulder there and gets a penalty out of it. It's embarrassing, but Brad Marchand is without shame, and we know that this is what he does. The Canadians' penalty killers tonight were phenomenal. Yol Armia, Caden Gooley, come get your flowers. You guys were fantastic. I thought Samuel Montembeau was very good in this game. Again, facing two and a half expected goals at even strength. He led in two goals, one of which is in overtime. But across the board, that's good. Chris Lee, the official, should never see another NHL game again. And it is... It's not just loser bias talking here. Is that every time Chris Lee calls a game, egregious things are let go against the Canadians. I go back to, and it was Matt Drake who pointed this out to me, the 2021 playoffs against Vegas. There was a point where Nick Suzuki shoves Braden McNabb away and goes to pick up his stick, and Braden McNabb pulls back and punches Suzuki in the face. And Chris Lee looks at him and shakes his head and goes, I didn't see it when he is standing four feet away from this. Chris Lee makes Angel Hernandez seem like a a palatable option 
for officiating. And those who are MLB fans know the level of standard that I am putting there. His ability, inability to call a game properly is a detriment. And if the NHL had any spine or any sort of accountability for literally anything top to bottom, Chris Lee would be calling games in the third league in Austria right now because he's a joke. Everyone talks about how bad Tim Peel was. Admittedly, terrible. Chris Lee just took up the mantle and isn't getting flack for it. And I just, I don't know what else to say other than he's a terrible official. And this, I know that the Canadians are not the only team that feels the wrath of this. But oh my God, it spoiled what was actually a very entertaining, if not low event game between two old rivals there. This game ended with... Not a lot of total shots. I think it ended with just barely over 40 total shots, 23 to 19 total shots, but it was fast paced. It was physical. There were good chances. There were good saves. It's exactly the kind of game that we'd love to see out of the Montreal Canadiens right now. Would have preferred they lost in regulation and not got the loser point out of it. And if you're going to go to overtime, just beat the Bruins because it's beating the Bruins. <laughs> like it's it's a game that I'm not upset about. Overtime wasn't great. Mike Matson with a bad choice, Cole Coffee with a flyby. None of that's good. But the big thing out of this, Uri Slavkovsky, Nick Suzuki goal or tandem for an early goal. Samuel Montembeau looked good. This is a Canadians team who really put a scare into the Bruins. And at this point in the season, that's the kind of thing that I'm in here for. Right. And this is the thing that we want from them for when they play any team that's good, right? We talked yesterday a little bit about how the Bruins are probably going to be on the decline after this. Uh, but, you know, while they're good, like, I think this is the kind of team that the Canadians need to play up against as much as they possibly can. We know there's no match, right? We know that the Canadians would be in over their heads. But at the same time, I really liked the way that they played. I liked that they didn't let it devolve, like, you know, Chris Lee aside. Like, Chris Lee did let it devolve in some parts or some things i love that he didn't let it devolve and also like i believe i haven't checked after tonight's game that for the last two weeks and a half the canadians actually have the best penalty kill in the league uh scott did you know that yeah they're apparently like 17 yesterday. for 17 in their last couple yeah. games which yeah is <laughs> I know. Where was all of this <laughs> the entire season? Yeah, I know Jake <laughs> Allen was bad, but like, where was this the entire season? I know. No, it's incredible. I mean, it does like the goaltending has been really showing up. And I like that the goaltending has not really been the story, right? But at the same time, I just, from my perspective, like, this is as much as this is as much as we were going to get from the Canadians. And they, they, like you said, they should have lost if they were going to play that kind of overtime, they should have lost in regulation to give us that point. Uh, but I do also want to point out that the Habs kind of, they sometimes shoot themselves in the foot um, when it comes to certain, um, certain things that they attempt where like they got to really be realistic about who they're playing, like, like who you're passing to, who you're expecting to complete a scoring chance, who you're, you know? So like, I feel like they're not being all that realistic. Sometimes like they might, there might be a better option to pass to, or there might be a better way to get the puck out of the zone uh, that they're not really hitting on. But at the same time, like that is something that isn't necessarily just a, a player thing. It's a coach thing. But at this point we're getting really nitpicky. Like I found the game, to be entertaining it wasn't soul crushing you know sometimes you watch soul crushing and then sometimes you watch the Habs play really well it doesn't look pretty on the ice but it was a fun game to watch it you know Habs Bruins like this is how it should be fewer shenanigans and more just like attempts to stay with each other and like like a real passion for trying to beat the other team and, and like I said it felt like a classic like a, a classically competitive game Bruins fans probably can't be happy that they struggled to break down this Canadian's defense and the thing is, the Bruins felt like they held the puck a lot. They were all over the Habs. They had like 11 shots in like the opening eight minutes and then ended the game with 23. You kind of got stalled out by a Canadian's defense that is not really good. An NHL and a half line, two NHL lines at the most. And you had nothing for most of the game. I'm... If I'm a Bruins fan, I'm a little concerned looking at that game that, again, you had to go to overtime against, and God love the Habs, an inferior opponent here to get to this spot. 
And that's probably not good enough for them, which is funny for me because I will happily bathe in Bruins misery in the playoffs, assuming they're not playing the Leafs in the first round. But it's <laughs> it's the kind of game that like I'm only mad because they lost in overtime and gave me the hope that maybe there's something special that they're actually going to do something here. And then they didn't because why would why would that ever happen? We got this much joy when we wanted this much and that this much was just a touch too much for that. Um, we're going to transition though. This is Friday. We usually kind of take it a little bit more casual here going into the weekend. We know the Habs are playing on Saturday, but we have much, much bigger, more important heist related news. And that is coming up in our next segment. Uh, but first our show is also brought to you by the folks at Robinhood. Did you know that if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA as well? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. And this offer is good through April 30th. So get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Some subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info, investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRA and 401ks. 3% match required for Robinhood Gold for one year from the start date of the first 3% match must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. We are back here at Locked On Canadians and the biggest story of the day is not involving the Canadians Yes, that's right. The biggest story involves not even an actual game being played tonight. Uh, I thought this was a joke when I saw it this morning as I was sitting in uh, massive car accident traffic on I-90. The Pittsburgh Penguins reported that a truck carrying 18,000 Yaromir Yager bobbleheads for Yaromir Yager bobblehead night was stolen off the road and they cannot locate it. And to that... When you posted that, I truly thought it was a joke. I thought it was a joke too. And I still am slightly thinking that it is a joke unless they've clued people in. But I can't remember if it was Josh Yoey or Seth Rohrbach who posted that federal authorities are helping them look for it and they had to delay Yarmir Yager bobblehead night and in How just, jammed up would you be if you got tickets to that game? I here's they apparently gave fans vouchers for it that when the bobbleheads come in, they can redeem the voucher and get one. I assume they will probably just order a backup amount of this for it because <laughs> it's a, assuming that truck doesn't get stolen. <laughs> and before we dive into the who or the what or the why this is happening, can we just kind of bring together this penguin season in which nothing is going right? You had a bad trade deadline. You are not in a playoff spot. You are faltering where you need to be. They are five points out of a playoff spot, but it feels like wasting a good season by Sidney Crosby. And to cap it all off, like a (laughs) shining spot is you put Yager up in the rafters. You've got these bobbleheads for Yager. And then they are literally stolen, robbed, stolen from you after being produced And if it is not the most, when it rains, it pours I've ever seen. I do not know what will ever top this. I still think it's a work, but oh my God, is this just the funniest thing that everyone is obsessed with now? Okay. So Scott, can you explain to me and all the people who don't know wrestling, what a work is? Because I literally tried to find out what that meant. I went on urban dictionary and I couldn't figure out what it means in wrestling. So in wrestling, (laughs) there are two kinds of being very general. There are two kinds of basically promos. There is a shoot where you are very real in what you are saying to this person. A shoot promo or a shoot interview is you are literally saying what is on your chest with your whole chest, regardless of whether it should be said or not. 
sometimes these can be planned a little bit and that, you know, they're like, you can't say this, but for the most part, go out there. Anyone who watched CM Punk's pipe bomb from years and years ago in the WWE or MJF asking Tony Khan to fire him for our AEW folks, that's a work shoot. That it's a very real thing, but it was approved. They are not just going off script. If you want shoots, just go look up everything that happened in WCW. A work is it is planned. Everybody knows what is happening. Like an injury angle. Is someone actually injured or is it a work where they are injured and they come back to save the day? Oh. My thought with this is this is there. Everyone's playing it up because I've never seen an NHL team just be like, hey, all of our things were stolen, just robbed from us here. So I am assuming that this is a work overall right now. <laughs> I um, just think that like the things are delayed because everything is always delayed. Like there's always shipping delays and material costs and stuff. They don't actually have the bobbleheads at all. Like they're just simply not ready and they can't say that. So they're like, um, yeah, someone stole them. Like that's, that's, <laughs> I mean, cause like, why else? It's like you said, why else would they come right out and talk about it? Do you know what I mean? Like they announced it on their own Twitter and they allowed themselves to become a meme. It was really fun. Don't get me wrong. And like, you know, there was like the opportunity to be like, oh, Yarmy Yager's on the case and things like that. And so I feel like that's something where is it supposed to like be like, well, he shows up and he finds the truck and then he drives the truck like, to pittsburgh or something I, I don't get it i don't even know where it's lost california apparently why was it in california when the bobblehead night is tonight <laughs> well i mean i was gonna make the joke that the fedex truck that i saw that was v that was jacked up and falling off a bridge was where the bobbleheads were but i don't know if the driver was okay so i don't want to make a joke at that expense was that uh, like where you were stuck in yes. traffic I will send oh, you the I photo. I saw that on group. the news. <laughs> I will send you a photo in our group chat. It was, <laughs> I drove past it three hours later and they were still trying to clean most of it up. Like anyways. All right. My sorry. Point sorry, is, sorry, listeners. <laughs> we got to go into Pepe Silva mode here and try to connect the dots on who did this. Of course, Gritty is like admit immediately being the person that <laughs> entity, entity uh, that they are. There's the weird thumbs up thing on this thing again. <laughs> That I think Gritty is a celestial being, not an entity. That he is one of the old ones. He's an eldritch being in disguise <laughs> uh, at this point. Um, I do love that, and this is a total sidebar to everything that we were talking about, is that Gritty is never treated as a person in a costume. Gritty is treated as a completely self-aware entity that does insane things. To the fact that there was the story where Gritty might have punched a child and everyone took the mascot side over the <laughs> fact that he might have punched a child. Uh, to which I say... Yeah, that's power you cannot buy, especially in Philadelphia. Um, <laughs> I've been trying to figure out how I can connect this to Kate Middleton disappearing, and I'm not sure how to do it because that's a lot of world crossing. But <laughs> my thought is this, that if this is tied to Kate Middleton disappearing and she's the one who stole all these bobbleheads as a way to somehow build a raft to escape the royal family, uh, this reboot of Fast and the Furious sucks. Uh, <laughs> But I'm trying to think of who the funniest possible person to steal Yarmir Yager bobbleheads would be. Um, and, and I'm drawing a blank on this. I'm like, I still think the Penguins are just in on this and this is a joke. But if the game was supposed to be tonight, uh, maybe it's not a joke. And maybe this is a thing that really happened. It's <laughs> I'm not convinced that this isn't just a, a, a joke being played out, but. I feel like the penguins don't have that kind of humor in this situation. I think it would be flurry. Oh, that's a very good one. Mark Andre flurry does love playing pranks. That's a very, very good one. Actually. Yeah. yeah. I, I, that, that's my guess. It'd be flurry. I, um, or, or Lou Lamorello. Well, no, Lou's <laughs> too old to know how to steal a truck at this point. He would just hire the mob to do it. Um, can we get like the Swifties on the case for this? Cause I'm yes. sure they could, if we could find a way to, well, they're not in Philadelphia, so we can't use the former Jason Kelsey thing that, or no one really likes Pittsburgh, man, we're never going to find these bobbleheads. We can't get the Swifties <laughs> on our side. Gritty admitted to doing it. Like I'm trying to think of the most out there thing that could happen for all of this in that. Oh, and I guess the biggest point is. If you're the person who stole a truck full of bobbleheads, what are you going to do with them? You can't <laughs> sell them because if you try and sell a bunch of Yarmir Yager bobbleheads, all everyone once, will know. Everyone's going to know that you stole all of them. <laughs> like 
what what was your point here in that like you went to open up a truck that you thought was full of something else and you found out it's full of bobbleheads <laughs> are you just the dumbest criminal in the world like what what how okay i'm gonna do a quick google here average cost of a bobblehead bobble <laughs> um Based on what I see on eBay, most like collectible bobbleheads go for about 25 to 30 bucks. Okay. Now so to do some math here. 25 times 18,000. 18,000. Also, how are you fitting 18,000 on one truck? It's got to be a massive truck. So how are you stealing and hiding this truck? So even if, if you sell all 18,000 of, oh, that's, I used, put one too many zeros in there. <laughs> um, even if you sell all 25,000, you're making a profit of you're making total four hundred and fifty thousand dollars, not counting shipping costs and everything else. The cost of having to store them, steal this, and get away with it is probably more than that at this point. <laughs> you would have knocked off a truck, which I assume is like a rider moving truck full of these things or whatever. Yeah, it's got to be pretty. Like it's got to be a big thing. It's not like a you know for like less a than a million dollars, and it's not like oh they're one of like a thousand. There's eighteen thousand of them. That's not a small amount. Like, <laughs> is this just the dumbest accidental robbery we've ever seen? I mean, the maple syrup heist made sense, but this I think that is was topical. calculated. That took yeah, a lot because, of talent. And there was a reason for that. This one is just <laughs> they might have picked the wrong truck and ended up with a bunch of toys. Like, <laughs> we That's the hear thing. We My theory, hear wait, I have one yes. more theory, sorry, is that it's like it's a, a Yarmir Yager creepy stalker that wants them for their shrine. Then go to the game. There's 18,000 <laughs> of them. Why would you commit multiple felonies? You're getting charged. <laughs> With likely Grand Theft Auto and Grand Larceny and potentially armed robbery for this. What are, like, no matter what you're doing, you're going to federal prison for a Yaromir Yager bobblehead? <laughs> oh my God. Oh man. We want to hear your theories too. You can tweet us at LO underscore Canadians, locked on Canadians at Gmail if you have. Uh, some longer thoughts. We have a couple of mailbag questions we want to get into to round out the week, and then we will sign off and we will see you all again on Sunday. And, but we will get into all those mailbag questions coming up in our final segment. But first, grocery bills can be so expensive these days, but now they don't have to be because you can start getting cash back on your grocery shopping with the free Ibotta app and get cash back every single time you shop. Ibotta is the free app that gives you the most cash back every time you shop on hundreds of items from groceries to beauty supplies to toys. So you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. And the average Ibotta user earns $256 a year, and that could cover an entire shopping trip. So you can buy that flight you've been eyeing, that game you've been dying to go to, or the fancy dinner that you have been craving. Other apps give you points that don't amount to much. With Ibotta, just add your offers in the app, upload your receipt, and you can get real cash that you can cash out to your bank account, PayPal, or gift cards. Join over 50 million users and earn cash back every time you shop from 2,700 brands and retailers, including Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and more. Right now, Ibotta is offering listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta by using the code LOCKDOWNNHL when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store, download the free Ibotta app to start earning cash back and use code LOCKDOWNNHL. That's I-B-O-T-T-A in the Google Play or App Store and use code LOCKDOWNNHL today. You have been grinning at me throughout that entire ad read. So now I am very curious what has happened in the <laughs> I was reading that ad. <laughs> Nothing because, um, I mean, it is it is one of our sponsors. So uh, I did get cash back on Ibotta buying frivolous things. So <laughs> I'm very pleased with myself. I was going to say, I'm like, what are we? I was like, what happened? What <laughs> did you happened think I on... found the bobbleheads? No. no. I was like, did something happen on no. Twitter while I was away? Like, <laughs> I was just agreeing with the ad because I'm a shopper. I'm a compulsive shopper. And I bought, I, I got cash back. I took advantage of our own offer and then I got cash back. 
I should just make you do the ad read since you're the one who used it this time. So um, um, I did it yesterday. Uh, but yes. All right. So we have a question. This is not a Habs question, but I thought it was a good question. Um, our good friend Jay, not Jay of the, the Blue Jackets, Lockdown Blue Jackets, who um, is also our good friend, uh, also um, Scott's alter ego, wants to know what are the three biggest current storylines not involving the Habs uh, in your mind and why? So for me, um, I definitely, definitely think what is happening to the Detroit Red Wings is a big one. Um, and um, I mean, this is going to be a really petty one, so I'm not going to include it as one of the three. But like, you know, uh, Florida Panthers fans are starting to get a little bit too into themselves. Um, Low-key annoying has gotten to high-key annoying. Um, but that's not a storyline. Uh, also what's going to happen with the Toronto Maple Leafs if they don't get past the first round? This, pre- I mean, the, the Toronto thing's always interesting because you never, ever know what you're going to get with the Leafs in the playoffs. You might get a wagon or you might get a wagon where the wheels are falling off. <laughs> the Red Wings thing, I think, is definitely the most interesting because they were seemingly pretty securely up there. They were chasing Tampa not far behind them. They're still not there. Two, they're four points behind Tampa Bay. Same amount of games played after everything. I believe these are the most up to date standings on the NHL app, which check it in the morning. Uh, but related to Detroit, uh, Buffalo has just decided to reverse Buffalo, and instead of being red hot in October and November and then falling off into a pit of despair, they started off in a pit in despair and are ending red hot. They are three points behind the Islanders and they played the Islanders tonight, shut them out. And one of the other teams in front of them, I believe it is Detroit. They are playing again this weekend. They are in the hunt very, very deeply for a playoff spot there. How Uh, fun would that be? I mean, not for, not for us because we don't like the Buffalo Sabres, but for it, like hockey in general. It would be nice to see somebody new in there. I've been kind of rooting for the Red Wings on the side. We love the folks over at Locked On Red Wings, but I live in Buffalo and the city is different when there's a playoff atmosphere for things going around, whether it be uh, the Sabres or the Bills. We talked about before the Habs-Sabres game that people were very apathetic towards this team and then things just turned around. It is a different vibe in the city when the sports are going well. Like when the Blue Jays were here during COVID, it was Blue Jays game day was the city embraced the Blue Jays as best they could. And it was a wild thing. I think the other biggest storyline is what's going to happen in Pittsburgh. They're five points out of a playoff spot with 17 games to play, but nobody's looking at the Penguins and being like, boy, howdy, what a threat. They're five points out of a playoff spot, but just six points ahead of the Canadians in the standing. That's and really the Habs funny. are a lottery team, which is, yes. you know, is what it is in this instance here. So uh, those are two of it. And then I think just out West, the central division is a bloodbath. Colorado, Dallas, Winnipeg, and Nashville are all in playoff spots. The Pacific has Vancouver, Edmonton, LA, and Vegas is barely hold is in a playoff spot too. It's the central division is a bloodbath and I can't wait to see what comes of it. Uh, I am nervous that the Habs are heading out West to face Vancouver and Edmonton and everybody else this coming week, because that means we have to stay up late and the Habs typically don't reward us too well when those games happen. (laughs) I was going to say, Scott, we have one more uh, quick mailback question, quickish mailback question. Uh, Dave K asks us if you can run the lotto simulator again and pick a player. Uh, Run sorry, lot- I probably should have. Yes, the the draft lottery thing that you always do. I probably should have warned you that that was coming so that you could do it before we started recording. As of right now, with the Habs where they are sitting in the seventh spot, it has them picking Sam Dickinson at seventh overall and picking Henry Muse at 29th. Uh, and then with the pick we got from the abs, it is Teddy uh, Stiga, who is playing in the USDP at 60th overall with the abs pick. But I will sim the lottery once. The Habs stayed seventh. Sim it again. The Habs move up and drafted Macklin Celebrini first overall. Um, <laughs> admittedly, if they're picking seventh and I'm going based off of this, my first thought is that they should still be taking Berkeley Catton at uh, seventh overall over any defenseman at this point. Um, but I'm also growing very, very fond of Tijiginla, mm-hmm. who I'm wondering if they can package something with their pick they got from Winnipeg 
to potentially move up and draft uh again uh son there just because i think uh I think there's a really good player there. Some of the scouts I've talked to really like them. And there's just something that we drafted a Ginla's son. Yes. Let's let's get all the really good Nepo babies in the organization <laughs> here. We already got Yannick's other son. So like, let's just keep adding players from the mid 2000s here. Yes. Or their, their children. <laughs> or their children. Also feeling old. Also speaking of scouting friends that we talked to, we'll have more of them as the Hab season winds down. Um, and we're very excited about that. Uh, but uh, personally, for me, the reason that I perked up when you said that was because we got a couple of listeners also very, very intrigued by Aginla. So um, we'll keep following that and hoping that the Canadians are able to move up in that draft lottery. Well, hey, we have a Kate Middleton update. It says Princess Kate on track for Easter return. Like she's coming off long term injured reserve or something <laughs> like She's going to start for Vegas in the playoffs on their third line. So, like, Are the bobbleheads with her? (laughs) I'm not convinced they're not at this point. So uh, as always, send us your bobblehead or Kate Middleton theories. We're really not picky on either. Uh, Laura's going to have a couple of solo shows next week because I have have guests. I have guests. Laura has guests. I have (laughs) uh, important day job business things to attend to to start next week. So unfortunately, I will be. Uh, absent for a few, but I will be back before the end of next week. Do not worry about that. Just Tweet in time to stay L- up late for one of the games. Yeah. <laughs> Tweet us at LO underscore Canadians, locked on Canadians at Gmail. Follow Laura at the active stick. Follow myself at Scott Matla. And as always, thank you so much for tuning in and we will see you all next time.